All right, so we see that there's these kind of families and locations of asteroids, uh, some eccentric, some spread out. But what, about, what do we know about the types? What are they made up of? Now, for most asteroids, they've never been visited by a spacecraft. Yep. They're too far away and too small to actually see what shape they are. Yes, yeah, right. So all we can do is measure the spectrum. Okay. So take the light divide up yep. its component wavelengths. And what we find is that here are the wavelengths from blue to near infrared. Yep. And that there are distinct types of asteroids with different spectra. Okay. There are three main types. And there's the S type. Now, this is very different from these other types. Yes, yeah, so S type. Uh, reflects very little light out in the blue and then peaks out so it's near infrared and then drops again. Okay. Then you've got the X type, which is the, um, now one thing we can find out for all these types is we can compare it to meteorites on Earth. Okay. So this is a way of pairing uh, our lumps of rock in space with the meteorite on Earth. We can measure a spectrum of a meteorite on Earth and see if it matches up with the types in space. And I guess by taking the spectrum of the meteorite on Earth, we can kind of fill out a little bit of this observation by seeing the rough shape. Yep. So there's the S type and the X type, which are pretty flat, and C and B are often merged, the, yep. the carbonaceous type, and they are flatter still. And so these are the three main spectral types. There are yeah. vast conference proceedings about the exact subclassifications <laughs> and so on. But by and large, it's the X, the X, uh, S, X, and the C CB. types. Yep. Um, what are they? Well, this is a C type, and C stands for carbon. Okay. So these are very dark yep. in color. Um, so that's is, why they reflect yep. less light. This is 253 Matilda. This is an example of one of these things. One, this is one of the few that's been visited. So yep. we actually got a picture of them. most of them, and they're just dots. And we can match it to the carbonaceous chondrite type meteorites we see on Earth, okay. which you talked about in dating the Earth. That's right. And these are probably more or less the raw materials that the solar system was made of in the inner parts. Okay. So it's pretty much a good mix of all the elements. Okay. Um, so these tend to be in the outer part of the asteroid belt and probably in the Trojans. Okay. And these are probably the more pristine, leftover from the early solar system type objects. They might even contain some volatiles like ices. So they would tell us a little bit about what that, uh, that uh, initial ingredient list kind of was when the solar system was yeah. created. Then we have the stony ones, S-types. Now that was the one that was very different. Yes. Um, and peaking kind of towards that red infrared. Yep. And here's an example. This is a 433 Eros, which is, yep. has the sort of spectrum again. It's once been visited by a spacecraft. So we've got a decent picture, unlike most of these things. And you can compare this to numerous mineral or meteorites that land on Earth, yep. which have the same sort of spectrum. And they're basically made of rock, much okay. like the rock on the surface of the Earth. So they're probably, they're definitely different than those carbonous contrites. Yes. And then finally, and rather rarer, are the thing that's called X-type or M-type. Yep. X for unknown, but they're actually pretty metal. Yep. And these ones um, are the ones that make the uh, asteroid miner's ions light up. Because that's these right. are like solid chunks of nickel and iron, other useful rare metals. And here's an example of one of these things. Um, and we get, this is in our lobby up at Mount Stromlo Observatory, chunks of these things. These things tend to survive. They're, they're relatively rare in the asteroid belt, but because they survive falling through the atmosphere quite well. They're overrepresented in what we find on the Earth's surface. And this is because they are so dense because the metals essentially don't break apart. When this chunk of metal hits the Earth, it lands as a chunk of metal. Because, I mean, uh, to put this in a scale, this thing isn't very big, right, Paul? I mean, it's only it's about, about this yeah. big. It's highly magnetized. See the magnet on the top That's of this. That's right. It's not to chain it down, right? Because yep. this thing weighs a couple of hundred kilos. It, it's yes. its own security device, as I say. If you can pick it up, it's yours to keep. No, it isn't. But yes. <laughs> um, if you look at the inside of these things, you see these enormous crystals of nickel and iron inside, yep. these called Wittmannstatten patterns. Okay. What's happened is normally when something cools down, um, you get crystals forming, but they don't have very long for the minerals to arrange themselves. Okay. Um, so normally the crystals are too small to see with the human eye. If you try cooling down a bit of steel in a sword or something, the crystals are too small to see without a microscope. But these things, because there were huge asteroids in space, they cooled down over millions of years, which meant they had time for really big crystals to form. So it's a very characteristic thing you almost can't get on Earth, because you can almost never cool something down slowly enough on Earth to get these huge crystals forming. And so these are the ones, as you, you said, and that we explore in the space course a bit more, that people actually care about when we talk about asteroid mining because we don't care about the rocky bits we don't really care about the carbon it's these giant chunks of metal that have the dollar signs and people i mean eyes. the single largest metal type asteroid probably has uh, enough metals that if you could sell them at current market rate you could buy the entire earth and yeah. everyone on it all right so we have clearly different types of asteroids so how are they formed 
Okay, so the carbonaceous chondrites are probably the primitive things that haven't had yep. much going on to them. The stony and the rocky ones, what we think happened is something like this. You would have had a bunch of meteorites that collided together to form a big asteroid. Okay. And this big asteroid, when it formed, would have become quite hot yep. from the, all the energy of the collisions, plus the radioactive elements in it and so on. And as it was hot, it would do the same thing that planets did, yep. which is the densest elements would sink to the middle and the yep. lighter elements would float like bubbles to the top. Okay, so as you said, very similar to what we think happened to the Earth, for instance. Which is why, we, as we said earlier, we have so few, such yep. a small amount of iron on the surface of the Earth, it's all buried underneath, unfortunately. <laughs> and the same thing would happen to these asteroids, and probably some of the bigger asteroids are still like this. They have the core in the middle and the rocky stuff on the outside. Yep. But if one of these asteroids cooled down over millions of years producing the Vidman Staten patterns in the nickel iron in the core, then had a collision, it smashed into something else, it could have broken apart. Now these things are small enough they would have solidified. Yep. Now the Earth, the middle is still molten. Um, but these things are much smaller, they lose their heat more easily, and so they could have solidified so it would have been solid. So it would have been, they, would have, they would have solidified way quicker than what we had on the Earth, so when it broke apart, it would break apart as solid, solid chunks. chunks rather than lava. Liquid. Yep. Yep. And what we think is simply the chunks originally in the middle are now okay. the, the metal type, the X type, and the chunks from the outside are the stony ones. So we think essentially if we took a giant sledgehammer and smashed the Earth, we could create this kind of fragment problem. Yes, that would be the Jupiter-sized sledgehammer, <laughs> I think. <laughs>